Hello, everyone. My name is Leah Wang. I'm a postdoc fellow from Dr. Curtis Hanhauer Lab at Harvard Teach Chan School of Public Health. So thank you for having me today, um, introducing our works on characterizing microbial community viability using RNA-based sequencing technologies. Okay, so about uh, viability, why we should care. To answer this, we need to look at the difference between a uh, human and built environment microbiome. The human microbiome is made up of uh, mostly alive microorganisms. However, different from the human uh, communities, there could be a greater proportion of dead microbes in built environment where the dryness, lack of nutrients, regular disinfections all contribute to a relatively harsh environment compared to our bodies. So in the conventional sequencing method, signals from the dead microbes in built environment are also detected, which could bias or sometimes overwhelm the viable members, in which case you still get a preview of the whole community, but definitely not the viable fraction of it. This may not matter much when you are just doing a survey of the community and see who are there, but it matters when you will like to know what they are doing because essentially the functions of our microbial communities are defined by the viable members. This is, um, this is especially important when we are monitoring some strictly controlled building environments such as the food and pharmaceutical laboratories, um, the like medical or uh, public facilities and uh, aerospace industry. So to characterize only the viable microbial communities at scale, previous studies have established several high throughput sequencing variants, including the 16S amplicon sequencing combined with chemical treatment using propylene monoazide, the PMASIC or amplicon sequencing that targets a transcript from 16S RNA genes, uh, the 16S RNA seq While these assays have been used to profile the viable communities, their accuracy were not evaluated previously. So the purpose of this study is to provide a, a systematic evaluation on these measurements. Up to now, we have finished the work on the chemical-based assay, the PMASIC. The results were published in Microbiome Journal earlier this year. So if you would like to, if you would like to know more details, definitely check this out. But the main takeaway is the PMS, while effective in very simple synthetic communities, it provides only qualitative assessment in real world settings. The performance is largely affected by both the biochemical background as well as microbial texture within that communities. Since the chemical-based approach may not be reliable, uh, always reliable in uh, real-world settings, we start to look at another commonly used viability assay, the RNA uh, amplicon sequencing. So we first validate the RNA-based RNA method using ribosomal RNA transcribed from the 16S genes as viability markers, the 16S RNA seq. It is worth noting that the 16S RNA seq here is different from the conventional 16S amplicon sequencing, which, the ampl which amplifies DNA extracted from the whole community. The amplicons here were generated from the cDNA templates reverse transcribed from the RNA of the 16S genes. To assess its performance, we first applied this technique in synthetic communities of E. coli and Streptococcus sanguinis. After that, we validate them in natural microbial communities from computer screens, mice, soil, and human saliva. These were spiked with known concentrations of E. coli as controls to, um, to see how quantitative uh, it is. And then we used in microbial samples from Boston subway system to see how they performed in real field environment. And we also did a comparative analysis using different, uh, using previous published data sets to see if there's any consistency across different studies or sample types. We first validated 16S rna -seq in synthetic communities. We prepared 10 cultures by mixing live and dead E. coli and S. sanguinis at different ratio as the demo here. 
We extracted DNA and RNA in parallel from each culture for downstream sequencing. The sequences from DNA libraries contain signals from the whole microbial communities, um, live or dead. While the RNA libraries, in theory, should only represent the viable communities. From sequencing results, we can see that the viability is actually um, pretty, uh, pretty accurately assessed by the 16S RNA seq in these simple com communities. Only the viable cells were detected in the monocultures group one to four and group nine and ten. In mixed mixed culture groups group five, seven, and eight, although the proportion of the two um, microbes differ slightly, slightly from the known um, percentage, the trends were highly consistent with the expectations. So this would suggest 16S RNA-seq was able, was able to at least semi-quantitatively differentiate viable from non-viable microbes in these extremely simple communities. However, when we applied this in pre-spike community samples, 16S rna -seq produced almost no differentiation between the DNA versus RNA libraries. The stack plot here shows the most abundant 15 texture across the sample types. As you can see here, the RNA libraries looks basically the same as in DNA ones, regardless of the sample type or whether they have spiked or not. The Brickertis dissimilarities between DNA and RNA libraries were very low here, and the samples were clustered by uh, sample types in the principal coordinate analysis, while not by library types. The results were slightly different in samples of similar origins, i.e. from the uh, subway systems. The RNA versus DNA uh, communities still look alike from the stack bar plot, but the samples were differentiated both by environment type as well as by library type in the PicoA plot. The library type does make a small yet significant contribution to the overall compositional dissimilarities, which would suggest the 16S RNA seq somehow differentiate viable from whole microbial communities in samples of similar background. So to see if our findings were consistent with previous studies, we did a comparative analysis, including several different data sets. This includes samples from indoor surface, like the kitchen and bathroom, indoor air, the oil facilities, and human stool. Overall, the results are just as we would expect it. In the PicoA plot, samples were clearly clustered by the source, uh, suggesting that sample type remains as the most important contribution to the uh, community dissimilar dissimilarities. However, when you zoom into similar sample types, the library type does tell RNA from DNA uh, libraries in some cases, such as the uh, subway samples, uh, as in the previous slides, the indoor air samples, the purple ones here, and uh, human stool samples. This agree with our findings that 16S RNA seq differentiate viable from whole communities in samples of similar origins. Mm, so it seems that the 16S RNA seq works in some cases, but not always. So we zoom into the texture and want to find out who contributed to those differentiations. We use the RNA versus DNA ratio as an index to measure the relative abundance changes of a genus between RNA and the DNA libraries. So the higher the ratio, uh, by definition, would suggest the bug being more active. And contrary, the lower the ratio, the less likely it's being viable. We can see that the 16S RNA seq represent an overall trend in the viability of certain families. For example, the Enterobacteria, uh, whose ratio is mostly above one, um, is likely to be more active compared to the fourth monodacia in stool samples, whose um, ratio is mostly around or below one. And the common common modacea and the tisulacea, both were human commensals commonly found in built environment, whereas the tisulacea are likely to be less active in oil samples, the dark purple ones, while the common common modacea is like, likely to be less active in indoor air samples, the 
light purple ones. So from this study, we provided a systematic evaluation of the commonly used viability assays. The 16S RNA seq could hardly di distinguish viable from whole communities in realistic settings, although it provides textual wise insight in some cases. This is likely in the nature of the 16S gene itself, given that the gene is extremely, uh, 16S RNA is extremely stable, even if the micro microbe has been dead for a long time. And on the other hand, this gene is not correlated with the actual cell count, which makes it more difficult to quant quantitative for quantitative purpose. Alternatively, the protein coding genes may be promising new markers for future assessment. However, the process was trickier than we had thought, and there were several challenges laying there before we could apply it at scale. So here is an example using the CPN60 gene, which is a universal housekeeping gene in bacteria coding for a chaperonic protein. From the bio biology aspect, the phylogeny of this gene is not well characterized. So taking the example of cholesterolia, you can see that the within um, the within class pairwise identity was almost at the same, lev same level with the between class identity, meaning that the genes of the same class are not necessarily more alike to each other compared to anything outside the class. Another tricky part is that uh, CPN60, although universally present in bacterial genome, is not conserved enough to be readily detected by any easygoing primers. Therefore, we have to use highly degenerate primers, which improve the feasibility in complex communities, but compromise PCR quality. And finally, when it comes to the data analysis, there's no optimal workflow for this, particularly large Amplicon. Neither are there any database comprehensive enough to profile the OTUs. Therefore, we still need to make more efforts before announcing that it's useful. So looking forward, there are several directions we can go to uh, further improve viability assets. For example, we can look for other housekeeping genes like GYRB, RPOB to see if they are more suitable for community study. Or otherwise, we can use uh, metatranscriptomics, which give us more inf uh, information on the activities. However, it might be challenged to apply in such low biomass build environment samples. So there's a lot we can do. With that, I would like to thank you for attention and welcome any questions.